Welcome everybody to another episode of Metal Mastermind. Today we're going to talk to you about the golden rule of recording. Now this isn't the typical rule that we know. We're talking about the golden rule of recording, meaning we need to factor in how our recording is going to sound and all the things that we need to think about as we do that. So Jason, let's dive right into it. What is our first rule out of the six rules that we need to keep in mind? Dude, Ken, you and I both know that if you get this first rule wrong, you might as well flush everything else down the toilet. Rule number one has everything to do with you, and that's the fact that you have to nail the performance. In fact, you need the most awesome and most excellent performance that you've ever done. Now, here's the thing. We're going to give you four practical ways that you can nail your performance. One is simply just practice. Whatever you do, whether you play guitar, drums, or sing, do that on a daily basis or at least on a several times a week basis. Don't be one of those musicians that, you know, you practice every couple of weeks for six hours, but then you don't touch your instrument or practice your voice for another week or two. Now, another thing that you can do, number two, no pun intended on the toilet flush there. Number two is know the song. You would be surprised on how many musicians walk into the studio or how many singers walk into the studio and they're like, okay, we're gonna learn the song now. No, that's not the time to learn the song. You need to know the song like the back of your hand well in advance before you even consider stepping into the studio. Tip number three for rule number one is warm up thoroughly before you start recording. If you're a guitar player like me, for example, before I record anything, I'll run through just some patterns on guitar. If you're a vocalist, this is extremely imperative that you do some warm-up exercises with your voice. You don't want to overstretch or anything like that, but just do some kind of exercise to warm your voice up. The fourth tip here is take some steps to make sure that you're prepared mentally and physically to put on an excellent performance. And this is everything to not drink enough ton of alcohol before you walk into the studio. Uh, uh, uh. And you also want to eat the types of food that's going to give you energy and that's gonna help with your mental clarity because you want to be zoned in and focused when you enter that studio to perform your recording. Now you may be saying, Ken, Jason, with today's modern technology, we can just fix everything in the studio later. Look guys, there's one truth you must know. You can't polish a turd. I always loved that term. Can't polish a turd. <laughs> The second golden rule is to make sure you have the right instrument. Now, when I say instrument, that could be the actual instrument, such as the drum set, the guitar, or it could mean the person behind the instrument, which is often the vocalist. Now, I'll give you two scenarios here. Let's say you're a drummer. You walk into the studio only to realize that the drum set they have in the studio is missing a second kick and your genre is, let's say, melodic death metal. You play a lot of double bass, so that drum set's not the right instrument for you. It's not gonna give you the best performance, right? And then we go back to rule number one here. So that's a tip if you're using the studio's gear to call ahead or, or meet with them ahead of time and make sure they have the appropriate gear for you. If they don't, then make sure you bring your own gear, which is what a lot of you do anyway. Now let's talk about the vocalist real quick. If your vocalist is not the right instrument, and sometimes you don't realize that until you actually get in the studio and you're like, whoa. Sometimes recording can reveal a lot of things that you might have been kind of sweeping under the rug. Here's what I would suggest doing, especially if the singer's a close friend of yours, of the band's, is say, look, let's put this recording project on hold for about six months. Our singer's gonna take some lessons, some vocal lessons, and just kind of get up to speed to where he or she needs to be. And if they're not willing to do that, then you probably just have to find a new singer. But either case, you need the right instrument. Let's dive into the third one. This is, gets a little bit more technical. The proper environment. What do we mean by that? Well, of course, when we say environment, we mean the space around us. Now, when we're recording in an environment, Sometimes we don't realize how much that environment actually influences the sound that we capture. If we're capturing, for example, inside a bedroom, it's going to sound small, contained. There's also going to be a bunch of reflections that are not optimized for having a wonderful vocal sound. Just one example out of many. Now, 
how do we get to that point? Well, sometimes we need to do a little bit of investments in our acoustic space, whether that means you have to get some foam to just kind of control the echoes inside your room, or you decide to build a room inside a room just dedicated to sound isolation. These are all ways of trying to achieve the right environment. This can vary from high cost to low cost, but the point is to treat the environment with some type of acoustic material to control how your sound encapsulates the room. The studio seat behind me was built by me and my partner. We went through, you know, great lengths to make this happen, although it didn't really cost as much as you might think. Just a couple of simple Home Depot purchases of wood and canvas and some rock wool, and we were up and running to make some really great sounding acoustic panels and an entire acoustic wall that we decided to dedicate to. It's not necessarily too hard, but it does take a little bit of just some carpentry, and it's actually kind of fun. We encourage it. You make it your own, the way you want to feel. Of course, if you don't want to do all that, you can certainly buy this stuff as well. Companies like Aurelex or Prime Acoustic are great examples of this kind of stuff. The fourth golden rule of recording is having the right microphone. Now, this goes a little bit deeper than just having an expensive mic. Just because the price tag is high doesn't necessarily mean it's the right microphone. So let's talk about death metal styles like the, the death vocals and the growls and the screams and all that stuff. You may not want a $5,000 condenser mic to record that in because that might not sound good for that style of vocals. You may get by with something like the Shure SM7B, which is like a well-known microphone for death metal vocals. However, if your singer is singing regular vocals, then they will probably need a different type of microphone, which is a condenser mic, because that's going to pick up all of those little nuances and just the, the liveliness of the singer's vocals there. But again, the most expensive mic may not be the best mic for that singer, so you really have to play around with these things and test them out. Now let's talk about mic and guitar amps, and of course, since you're on Metal Mastermind, you know this is about metal, so the one microphone that we all know is trusted for miking loud guitar amps is the Shure SM. 57. Now, we're not promoting products here, but this particular mic is something you'll find in almost any professional studio and it has been used to record countless rock and metal guitar amplifiers. Of course, there are other mics you can mic a guitar amp with as well, and the key is, is try to practice using different type of mics. Try to do that before you step into the studio so that you save yourself some time and money. <laughs> But that's not the only thing about microphones. We have to remember, just like how we have to treat our environment, we have to make sure our microphone is in the right place in that environment. When we are recording, we have to keep in mind that where we put that microphone greatly impacts what's being fed into our recording. If we are not putting the microphone right where the vocalist's mouth is, and we put it right at his chest, we're gonna get some sort of a boomy type of sound with not a lot of definition. Microphones are very, very picky, so where you put them absolutely matters, even in something like a kick drum. When you put a microphone inside a kick drum, you're going to get that attack, which is really, really enticing for us metal lovers, but you're not gonna get that big bottom end as if you were to mic outside of the kick drum. So, we always like to, in that instance, we like to use two microphones because we like to capture that really sharp attack, but then we also want to capture the big bottom, which is integral for feeling the kick drum when we listen to the music. In many instances, this is why we use more than one microphone for a particular source. We want to capture all elements possible from that instrument, and sometimes one microphone isn't enough. And depending on where we place that microphone, it will help assist what we're trying to do and if it's in the wrong place, it will counter our objective. The last part of our recording chain that's imperative to remember is our microphone preamplifier. Preamplifiers are a big thing in the audio community and people love to collect these items. They're one of the biggest factors that influence the timbre of our music. What's timbre? Well, timbre is the way something sounds. 
It's the natural color, right? So if we have different sounding preamplifiers, we're essentially having an entire color palette to add to our microphone signals. Now, if you get something like a Neve preamplifier, you're probably going to get this big bottom, chocolatey middle type of sound. Really great for something that's raunchy and big. You want that kind of sound. But if you go with something, let's say, like an API mic preamp, you're going to get something that's a lot more open in that mid-range, which is great for something like horns, especially if you're using stuff like ribbon mics. I love using APIs with ribbon mics. They really open up that mid-range to a point where I could get that clarity and really appreciate what that instrument has to offer. But for some other instruments, it might be a little too sharp. So that's where that Neve would kind of come in. So let's review this for a second, okay? So we want to achieve great performance, proper instrument, right environment, proper microphone, proper microphone placement, and of course, we want the right microphone preamp. With all of this combined, we are going to see an amazing result in our recordings. So try to achieve this as best as you can in your own space. You don't have to go to the extent of creating a million dollar studio, although that's really nice and great to have, but there are ways around that. You don't need all the fancy schmancy stuff. You got a lot of resources that in really, when it comes to recording, it's an acoustic thing. And microphones, they're not like cameras. They're not all about aesthetics. They're all about the right sound. So treat your sound as best as you can. Nobody's going to know the difference whether you did it in a million dollar recording studio or your garage if your garage was acoustically treated to the right specs, right? So just make sure that you are keeping all of this in mind and where you want to do your next project. So all of these points are super important if you want to really have a record that stands the test of time, which of course, records, it's like your stamp in the world. So doesn't your record deserve to be the best that it can be? One of the things that we have that's totally free for you guys is if you come to our metalmastermind.com slash join link right in the description below, you will find a guide for the ultimate quick guide to the ultimate studio for your home setup. So definitely go to the YouTube description and download your free guide right now that Ken just talked about. And guys, please give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and ding that little bell so that you get all the notifications. Thank you guys so much for supporting our channel here. Until the next video, horns up.